Hi there, this is Josh from Literary Gladiators, and in a month where we are filming a video every day, how can we not have a foodie book tag? So, I'm going to change that and introduce the 15th and newest foodie book tag. We have previously done uh, book tags for cheese, cookies, butter, pasta, cannoli, sausage, seafood, soup, sandwiches, pizza, classic candy, melons, apples, pumpkins, and the newest one, muffins. February 20th is uh, Muffin Day, which I'm releasing this a week early so that there are, uh, so that by the time we reach Muffin Day, there will be, uh, there will hopefully be uh, a great influx and motivation to do the Muffin Book Tag. And if anybody's interested in doing something on February 20th, uh, muffin book tag would be a great idea. So, let's get right into the questions. I have ten of them. Uh, questions are based off of different kinds of muffins. And the first one is the blueberry muffin. If someone said literature, what is the first writer that comes to mind? He's not my favorite, but he's the one that pop that I would say pops up immediately. And when I, the way that you should approach the first question is similar to the uh, classic uh, psychology uh, method, uh, where if the psychologist says one word, you got to think of the first thing that comes to mind. And that would be Shakespeare, which, not my absolute favorite writer, but he's definitely the one that pops up in my mind first when uh, the word literature is placed on the table. Next one is the English Muffin, a work of British literature that became easier to understand when discussed. And we're going to go back to British Literature 2 from 2013. This was around the time I was constructing the first season of Literary Gladiators. The very last thing we discussed was The Mark on the Wall by Virginia Woolf. And upon reading it the first time, I really had a challenge really uh, grasping the content. But the instructor uh, gave us a prompt to stare at any image for five minutes without taking your eyes off of it and writing down your experiences that were going on in your mind. And that's exactly what the mark on the wall was about. When you're looking at any particular image, there's a good chance that you're thinking about so many other things while you are examining the image at hand. We went over the mark on the wall in season two, and Virginia Woolf in general is just amazing. She's just brilliant with how she approaches things and writes about them. Next one is The Corn Muffin, a book that is great to take on the go and read at any time. For me, it's going to be general. Uh, it would be any book of random trivia. Uh, one such example is Grover Cleveland's Rubber Jaw, which I didn't think it was that good of a collection of presidential trivia, but it definitely makes do. Uh, and just reading different uh, tidbits and fun facts and just interesting facts, just taking them in one by one is always fascinating, and you get a lot out of them. Next one is the Chocolate Chip Muffin. A writer you feel was or has been able to write during all aspects of their life, 
And I chose Ray Bradbury for that one uh, because he's the one author that I read works from his early and his prime. And I also read a later work of his in Farewell Summer, and I thought that one was amazing. It was a great way to continue uh, Dandelion Wine, which it took place right after it, but it was not released until 2006. And, uh, he did write a little bit uh, later on. Uh, well, it wasn't as frequent, uh, what he did write, uh, he really demonstrated uh, how he still had it in him. Uh, uh, Herman Woke is somebody I need to read from uh, recent because he is 102 years old. He will be 103 in May. And he still, uh, he finished what he said would be his last uh book, but we never know. Uh, he still writes in his journal or his diary every day, though. Next one is Oatmeal Raisin Muffin. A bookish trait you feel is just not necessary. And this one I had Don Levy in mind uh, and his uh, uh, distaste for oatmeal raisin of anything. Uh, and Charlie's the same way on her show. Uh, but uh, for that one, it would be sex scenes, because I th there are some instances where a sex scene is necessary, but from what I have seen, it's just done so frequently and in such a similar manner that, to me, it, it turns me off. Uh, it's almost as if they're only writing for the marketing and that they are pot boiling. It's an element of pot boiling, doing it just to uh, fulfill the cookie cutout and doing it for the uh, money that comes with the uh, creation of a story. This one is just more so pumping them out as opposed to actually creating. Next one is the Bran Muffin. What kind of reading material do you find that you constantly force yourself through? And I would say that uh, I'm going to have to say Shakespeare again. His way with words is remarkable, but the way that he uses the words, uh, I feel that they fit more for uh, sonnets, which I enjoy his sonnets far more than I enjoy his plays, which there are plays of his that I enjoy, but they're a challenge to follow along because of the uh, poetic verse in which he writes. Uh, ancient world literature is also a great uh challenge to follow in many cases uh, because of the way that it is worded, but I managed to make myself through, uh, and I especially, uh, and this this does not include uh, Aesop or Sappho. Next one is Cranberry Orange. Which two characters from different works would you like to see in one? And I'm going to choose various characters from two novels that are different, but are very similar at the same time. And that is To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee and A Time to Kill by John Grisham. I'm specifically looking at uh, Jack Briggins and Tom Robinson. Uh, there's... Atticus Finch and Carl Lee Haley, which would mean what if the what if you took one character and moved them decades forward, or what if you took another character and moved them decades back? Another interesting one would be Carl Lee Haley and Bob Yule. 
And I only imagine what Carly Haley would do to Bob Ewell. Uh, it wouldn't be, he wouldn't be subdued the way that uh, Tom Robinson was. He would really have it out with him. And you just have so many interesting combinations and different responses and uh, how characters would respond between different periods of time. So these would be my two. Uh, mixing different, mixing the many characters from both of these works. Next one is the coffee cake muffin. If you could see any poet, dead or alive, recite poetry at your cafe, which one would it be? I'm going to choose Allen Ginsberg. Uh, Dr. Bordelon, who has been on a few episodes on our channel, actually went to see Allen Ginsberg recite poetry right before he died. And just watching him perform, uh, he's... If there's any particular poet that made me realize that poetry has no boundaries, it's Allen Ginsberg. And watching him recite with his straightforward, razor tongue, honest attitude, holding back no punches, that'd be an experience. The next one is the Cruffin, which is a croissant-muffin hybrid. A great short work of French literature, and for that I chose The Attack on the Mill by Emil Zola. It's by no means lighthearted because it takes place during the middle of war, but it really does an amazing job uh, approaching things uh, outside of the box. And it really got me into Emil Zola and his uh, naturalist attitude. Uh, my honorable mention would be Micromegas by Voltar and how that really uh, takes things outside of the box as well. Next one is the Muffin Top, a work that would be better abridged. And for that I'm choosing Les Miserables by Victor Hugo. Not the story itself, but the history of the French Revolution at the very beginning. I think that Victor Hugo, uh, it's, I think that it's, I think people should know about the French Revolution and about French history, but I think that with this book in particular, with a concentration on the story, it would be easier to make your way through in a much uh, quicker manner. Uh, I got more than halfway through this, uh, but I need to get back to this. Next one is, what's your favorite muffin? And well, I would say you have uh, the coffee cake or the crumb muffin and uh, chocolate chip muffins that I would be willing to sit down and enjoy, but this one here, the cinnamon chip muffin, uh, is quite delicious. Uh, they have these where I work, and uh, I enjoy getting them every so often. Uh, and the last one, let's go to Drury Lane. Who do you tag? I'm going to tag 12 people because it's been a while since I've done a foodie book tag. I'm going to be tagging Steve from Steve Donahue, Alyssa from Sushi Dragon Master, Sue and Megan from the Restricted Section, Mark from Richardson Reads, Sean from Sean the Book Maniac, Lukash from Lukash's Books, Tessa from Tessa's Library, Rebecca from Rapacious Reads, Danielle from This is Danielle, Laura from Laura Pora, Diana from Diana in Color, and Mandy and Alana from Nerds Next Door. Thank you for tuning in to the 15th Foodie Book Tag.
I hope you tune into some more videos from our channel. And the triathlon continues for the month of February. For now, keep reading and go enjoy a muffin.